Hey everybody, welcome to the next episode of the Strand Tennis Center podcast, filled with tips, advice, tennis, not tennis, just life advice too, whatever you need. Uh, like it on YouTube, share it on uh, the podcast as well. Thank you. Everybody, welcome to the Strand Tennis Center podcast. It is what, Thursday, November what, 11th? 12th, 11th. Oh, 11. 11, right? 11. 11. 11. 11, 11 Santi. Yes. Thank you is. for being here, Santi, as always. Thanks for having me. We are going to go over, you know, these, uh, again, this podcast helps us hone in on some things and some philosophies. Usually we do videos while we're teaching and uh, Santi will rip off the, uh, the audio and we'll do a podcast out of it. But this is nice that we're spending a little bit more time. So this is really kind of the pressureless uh, episode to pressurize or not? I can't even say that word. Not to even saying to pressurize. To pressurize or not to pressurize your play. Okay. Um, as you can see in front of you, this is kind of a progression of balls. Um, <clears throat> this we'll go right through it. This is kind of a new developmental series, which has been around for a while. I would say it's new because when I was growing up playing, it was never here. Seventies, eighties, nineties. No, I'd say two yeah. thousands. This started somewhere around there. Uh, Pretty popular with the USTA. This is a foam ball. This is the developmental stage usually. Usually a foam ball or a red ball is for the developmental stage, uh, say, four years old, okay. five years old. They really can barely feel. What I mean by pressurized, let's go from the beginning. Pressureless means that there's no, it's basically a dead ball. So when it hits, it doesn't travel through the air as fast. Mm -hmm. So kids generally swing big and they swing hard, right? right. So this will not fly everywhere. Right. The, the ball, the regular pressurized ball, is heavier, and if you are little, you can't really control it, and if you swing big at it, it will take off because it's got pressure in it. Yeah. These, these balls that don't have pressure are basically hitting with a dead ball. So the s yeah. bigger you swing, the more you control it, um, the more you can control it. Mm -hmm. So at these ages, this red ball and this foam ball, at the kind of four- to five-year-old range, I would say even six are using these balls because they can control the ball. And if you get to the next stage, you would go to the orange ball, which is usually, you know, let's be on average. These are just average. There's always outliers, 8 to 10. Right. And then you're going up to a green ball, which is closer to the yellow ball, which is about, say, 11 to 12, right. something like that. So now the issue is what is the value of this progression? That's a good question. Uh, the question which for me is I don't see much value. Um, I'm really a believer in getting to this ball as soon as you can. So everybody asks us, do we do this progression? And we don't because, number one, uh, we want to be able to teach the way we want to teach, and I don't want to feel like, well, I want to follow the USTA's rules because they'll give us a sponsorship for it. We're not interested in that. We're interested in the best development for the kid. And really, what we feel is we may use this ball when they're really young. Right. These two balls we don't need to use. Yep. And after you get to a certain spot, you go right to the next ball. And that's a big, big key. Hey, Rachel, we're just doing a podcast. How are you? Hi, podcast. It's always live, always active. So what happens here... And this is just my philosophy, personally. And I find that we get players that can handle the ball better, the yellow ball, a lot quicker. Right. This is fun. This is fun. And that's what the USTA and tennis is trying to do. They're trying to make the game easier for kids right. so that it gets Pick up inclusive. Yeah. So they can yeah. play and get to it. Tennis is a difficult sport. So right. we start with this progression so the kids don't feel frustrated. Right. My philosophy is something should be hard mm -hmm. and something should be exclusionary. And the hard is what makes it great. Okay. All this is fun, but it doesn't really prepare you for this. Because you have to deal with the ball that's pressurized. It's a big difference. It's a big, big difference. difference. Big so difference. you can have this great time down here. And maybe we'll use these balls sometimes because the kids are so little and it doesn't really make right. a difference. When we get into development and swings, mm -hmm. Kids are going to swing the wrong way with these balls. They're going to swing real big. Their mm -hmm. backswing is going to be huge, and it's mm -hmm. going to go in, and they're going to have a great time, but they're not really playing tennis. Mm -hmm. With tennis, you have to have a compact backswing. You have to use your torso. You have to use your body with this ball to control it. Mm -hmm. So 
this is just delaying the frustration. Right. And I sincerely believe, and if you just look at history, 70s, 80s, 90s, the Americans had the best tennis players, McEnroe, Sampras and Agassi in the 90s, mm-hmm. all the 80s, you know, 70, all the Garrett Lies, because everybody never used these balls. They, have they didn't have. Yeah. Now we have this progression. And how many top 10 players have we had in the last 10 years? Not many. Not many. So I, I think the proof's in the pudding. I think if you get rid of these balls, mm-hmm. maybe I'll give you this one. Right. And we get right to this. Yeah. Kids are going to be better. Mm-hmm. They're going to be tougher. They're going to understand that tennis is tough. And it's going to weed out people that aren't necessarily the best. So it's what you want. It's what do you want more of your numbers built up in tennis so the they can, you know, it looks good for, for USTA in tennis? Or do you want the best players playing and some great athletes playing? And it, it could be frustrating, but that's okay. The game is frustrating. And... Uh, once you get to this green ball, there's really, you know, yeah. you don't even need to you do it. But to. that's my point. Do you have any, any observations? Um, I have noticed that, like, these two balls, they're basically the same balls. This one's just bigger. Correct. But these are good for, like, yeah, definitely the kids that don't have any muscle development at all, like Agreed. the four- and five-year-olds. It's good because it's, like, easier for them to hit because they can barely hold a racket themselves. So it's just something that's, like, easier to hit, and if they can get it over the net not bad this one definitely when you drop in front of a little kid like a four or five year old um it's definitely a lot harder because when they hit it they have to swing the racket themselves and then get through the 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 mass of the ball and it's harder to get through this mass because it has the pressurize in, in it and it just weighs more so these are yeah definitely not bad but these are definitely a waste of time you know, once and like even when we teach, we, we definitely use these for the four and five year olds. And like after a week, maybe the first two classes, they might miss all their shots. But after that, then they're good. They can hit all these balls perfectly fine and go over the net. And, you know, it's not a problem at all. No, no, I'm all for having fun. So, yeah, you yeah. you toss this ball to the four year olds. Yeah. And then when they want to rally, give them this ball sometimes and it's yeah. fun. I'm all for that. But. I think a parent would rather have their kid be better at the sport right. than just having fun the whole time. Right, right, right. So a little frustration is always good. I think being right. uncomfortable in life is key. How would you learn how to walk? Yeah. You stood up. You fell down. Somebody yeah. picked you back up. They didn't just leave you there and carry you around. Yeah. So things should be a little bit tough. It builds character and it makes you just better. It shows tenacity. It's mm-hmm. If you can get... To this ball quicker, mm-hmm. showing an ability to uh, deal with frustration. I also noticed that like kids don't even know the difference that there are any other balls. So if you just start them on this, they're not going to know that there are other balls That's that they could point. try to play with. You know, if you start them off on this one, even if they're in middle school, it doesn't matter what age. This is the ball they're going to end up playing with in the end anyway. So if they get used to the timing of it and how high it bounces, stuff like that, their motor sensors and all that stuff, like will trigger and then like they'll their hand uh, hand and eye coordination will just like get a lot better than like with these you kind of like lag them a little bit you know like you don't need all these baby steps you can just you know work on their motions as as they are well i agree if you if you can look at it twofold again progression wise we think it's better to get to the yellow ball quicker uh this progression you can also look at it very business wise you think Mm -hmm. about it how much do these cost as a business owner? Do these cost a lot more? Cause no, to- uh, they, they, they cost a little bit more. Right. Correct. I, I, I wish I knew the number exactly specifically. Okay. I, forgive me for not knowing. But really, it's really for, it's almost like a business tiered system. So the club mm-hmm. makes you go, all right, you're in a red dot series. You're in an orange dot. So it keeps the kid in the program longer, right. which... I think that's all a money grab to get them to the next step. All right, he's a green dot. He's an yeah, orange yeah, dot. Yeah. Well, we just it sounds get like to the you're yellow limiting ball. To the kid. It sounds like you're limiting them from like well, moving on. I essentially, think that's what right? you're doing because yeah. if you keep them in the program, long, get another year of money out of yeah, them, yeah, the yeah. Orange you're like, ball. oh, I don't think he's good enough. And for then the green another dot, year of money yeah. out of here. And then the parent just agrees because they don't know any better. They don't. You know it's I mean? unfortunate. The parent yeah. doesn't know that all of this is usually a revenue generator for somebody, so they. Keep them in the system longer and say, well, no, you need to do these seven things to get to the green dot ball. 
Mm-hmm. And so that keeps the kid in the system longer. Instead of saying, hey, uh, he's four, he's six, he's using this ball, and if he continues to enjoy tennis and love it, he'll, stay, he'll keep playing. We like to firmly believe that if they're enjoying it and we're helping them learn, they'll stay in that ball forever, which they should be because that is the tennis ball. Yeah. I think I all out of these are money grabs, basically what we're, we're trying to say. Yeah. Um, I agree. And when I first started working here, you know, I knew that they ha- we have other balls, but I've never seen, like when I was learning with people and teaching with other coaches, we never used any of these balls, even yeah. with the, the little kids. And I feel like this ball is the first ball you should just use no matter what. You know, if you have a really tiny kid, sure, you can use that one, maybe these two, whatever they have at, you know, at the store, at Target, wherever, um, or on Amazon, whatever. But eventually, the kid's going to have to hit this ball anyway, and I definitely can see the kids can hit these balls perfectly fine, no matter the age, you know. I agree. The hardest part, honestly, for a kid is just holding a racket with whatever muscle development they have already. Oh, they have those That's the hardest They have those different racket. They have, yeah, like that they have foam like, rack and the paddle yeah, racket too. But I rack. agree. Yeah. Just grab a junior racket and mm-hmm. get up there and start swinging. Yeah, I, I agree. swing and have fun. And they like to hit home runs anyway, so let them hit home runs. <laughs> so I think this podcast is basically we don't believe in pressurized balls as a full progression. Like we can use them down here a little bit, but all this is just biting and kind of Wasting time, yeah. and you just got to get to this. Get out, get these out. Yeah. The you know, sooner, yes. That's that, not that, terrible. That's I can, not terrible. That we can, can work with. I can live with that. The sooner you get to this ball, the yeah. better a player you're going to be. Yeah, you're definitely hindering people using these. Correct. And we've had players come from other clubs, and they're like, oh, I'm still on the orange ball. Fair I'm enough. like, I don't even know what that means. Okay? <laughs> like, if you can't or, hit this ball, you can't hit it, and then, like, you're... You have a good, like, stroke and stuff, but for some reason your timing is off. That's because you're not used to a regular ball, and that's what you should be playing with anyway because that's what you're going to be playing with for the rest of your life. Yeah, right? It's like uh, I won an orange ball tournament. It's just yeah. a tournament to make the kid feel good, which is yeah. great, but yeah. I'm all for feeling good, but you don't want to be in a, in a state of delusion a little bit too and go, okay, you know, let's get to the reality of tennis and say, okay, we need to start getting to this yellow ball. Mm-hmm. It's a very fine line between feeling good about yourself and being a little delusional about where you are. Mm-hmm. You don't want to do that. Agreed. Agreed. Pretty simple. Pretty quick, pretty clear today. Yep. Uh, hopefully that helps. If there's any questions or comments, put them in there. Put the comments in the, at, at the end of the podcast. Share it with anybody you, you want to about this, and that's about it. Just a quick little snippet on pressureless balls. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Little snippet. Little snippet something. Oh, baby. Hey, everybody. Hope you like the podcast. Please share it with your friends, anybody that you know, anybody that's into tennis, anybody that's into bettering themselves. Share it.